Well, here we go. Uh, this is the uh, feed line that needs to have the three inches cut off. First thing I need to do is uh, strip the tape back off of this thing. Now you know why I didn't seal it with uh, liquid tape after I got done and tape it all up because I, I kind of I had a feeling I'd be chopping a couple of inches off of this thing. So I, I guess I might as well. Right now I'm just involved with this but once I whack it off I'll be committed. Yeah, it's sort of like bacon and eggs, you know, the, uh, the chicken's involved, but the pig was committed. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's about an inch and three quarters from uh, where the cable goes down through the strain relief hole to the center of this uh, lower screw. And from the strain relief hole to the uh, next strain relief hole between there, it's about an inch and a quarter. So my three inch point would be right about, I pulled the cable back through a little bit, it's going to be right about where my thumbnail is right there, give or take a couple of millimeters. So let's do a whack job on that. Uh, here goes. There she is, she's cut. Now all I got to do is take her apart. And there it is, taken apart. Well, what you're looking at here is my workbench in the yard. I had to bring my soldering iron out, of course. I'm going to have to tin the end of the uh, feed line wires. And I've got my little third hand anchored to the ladder. And the other uh, is anchored to the feed line so I can tin it. Once I get the wires tinned, uh, then I can go ahead and thread it up through the holes and the... Uh, and the strain relief and bend it over to where I can uh, start soldering on the back. Well as you can see uh, I'm about to solder the connector on the end of the wire and then I'll pull this heat shrink up and shrink it down. And then I'll fasten it to the screw back to the screw underneath the uh, the nut and the lock washer and the flat washer right here. Then I'll work on the second wire. Well, it's not quite as uh, neat as it was to begin with because uh, I had ideal working conditions the first time at my bench. But it still didn't turn out too bad. All I have to do now is shriek, uh, apply a little heat uh, to the heat shrink and uh, that should finish the job. Let's see what happens here. And that ends it up. Well, actually I wasn't totally finished. I had to wrap a little bit of... Uh, electrical tape around it just to kind of hold things together and now we'll just wait until Tuesday when Glenn comes back over I hope this thing passes this time <laughs> if it doesn't too bad so sad we'll just keep working on it just a quick note here to uh, show you the I've got the uh, antenna uh, hooked up to the back of the uh, uh, Heath kit and uh, I'm on the 80 meter band right now and I'm listening to a few people talk, so I figured I might show you folks that the, the transceiver on the receive side is working real well, and the, uh, the antenna, uh, the SWRs that we're trying to bring down in the antenna do not uh, affect the receive side. We're only talking about transmit, and uh, you don't need a license to uh, listen uh, to any frequencies that your radio can pick up, whether it's a ham band radio or whether it's a general coverage radio like uh, an old boat anchor I got here or a more modern uh, uh, general coverage receiver. You only need a license if you're planning to transmit. So you can buy a, a ham radio, throw up an antenna and listen to anything you want to listen to. It doesn't matter. No license needed. Now let's, let's crank up the, uh, the 80 meter band here. I was having a problem with the uh, AF gain. The audio frequency gain uh, was not working very well and I was not getting much meter movement out of my uh, S meter. As a matter of fact, I wasn't getting much at all. It was just kind of laying there all the time. So I had to troubleshoot that. And I finally got that thing fixed. So let's, let's crank up and pick up on some 80 meter transmissions going on. Uh, I'm sounds good. I've been driving all day and I'm tired. And, uh... I like I really like the looks of this thing at night. It just has a really really neat glow to it. 
Unfortunately, I'll probably wind up putting the top back on later and it'll all disappear and I'll just have my front lights, but even then it'll still look pretty cool. It's working real good so far. I haven't checked out the transmit side yet. I'm not going to do that until I get my antenna tuner in and until the G5RV antenna is perfectly tuned. Or as, or as good as we can get it as far as the standing wave ratio goes. Just keep in mind, it's a multi-band antenna, and what we're trying to do is reach a compromise between all of the bands. So we're not, it's not going to be perfect, but it will be much better when we get done. Okay, this is time number four, and Glenn has returned, and this is election day. We've all done our, have you done your civic duty yet? Oh, yes. We have all done our civic duty by voting. Could not and, wait uh, to do. Couldn't, yeah, I'm same way, couldn't wait. And uh, he's, it's rainy out today. It's really overcast. We got a lot of rain. Boy, we needed it in Arkansas. And he's going to give me a verdict here in a few seconds. I'll go ahead and shut the camera off, and I'll come back with his verdict shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, it is verdict time. Is it good, bad, or indifferent, Glenn King? It is a good antenna. It is a good antenna. All right. It is, so it is where frequency-wise, it is where it's supposed to be on 20 meters and 40 meters. That's fantastic. 80 meters. It's still a little bit. The SWR could be better, but it's only like 30 feet in the air. Yeah. If it was 60 feet in the air, it'd probably be perfect. All so, right. Right. You are good. So you I should be able to. to I should be able to do a couple 40, of CQs here shortly, 40 right? And Twenty meters, you will not have a problem. Ten meters and fifteen meters, you're going to have to rely on your tuner. All for right. OSW. And that'll take care of it all. I've already take ordered the tuner. It'll be here in a couple days. Great. Glenn, you're a fine feller. I appreciate you taking all this time and gas and energy and money to come over here and do this my, for me. Thank you very much. For you and the and the viewers. <laughs> and the YouTube viewers. <laughs> and thank you. Sir, fine feller. Well, there you have it, folks. The G5 RV antenna is finally tuned the way it's supposed to be, cut to the right length. The standing wave ratio across the bands from 10 to 80 is where they're supposed to be. Uh, or if they're a little bit out, I will be able to bring them in with my tuner. Incidentally, uh, the tuner I ordered was an MFJ 949E. I've heard good things and bad things about MFJ products, but I'll tell you what. You know, that's something that's made in America by American hands right down here in Starkville Mississippi and as far as I'm concerned that's good enough for me and uh, it'll be kinda nice to have something uh, that I can buy with my money that's made in America if you know what I mean and uh, they have a guarantee uh, anything happens in the first year you call them up they're gonna take care of it you can't ask for anything better try calling China try to find you know call some guy in China and tell him you got a problem with one of their products and see what happens anyway it should be in in the next couple days the next video will probably cover how to use the uh, the antenna tuner. You know, fiddle around with the knobs and everything. Glenn may be back to help me with that. And then hopefully once all that's done and the uh, transmit side of my uh, Heath kit, HW101, has been fully checked out, then we can go ahead and do the CQ, the first contact. And that's going to be kind of an exciting time for me. It's been since last December when I first decided I wanted to become a ham operator and I think that's when I posted my first video so for those of you who stuck with me through all this thick and thin and all this stuff I appreciate it a whole lot and we'll just see you all next time this is John